Today we're going to show you how to edit your subject and background separately in Lightroom for desktop. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. In this video, we're going to show you how to separate your subject from the background so you can edit each of them separately. Now this is going to help you create better images and work with both color, contrast and exposure. So here we are in Lightroom. I love this image, but I would like to see the background kind of match my subject a little bit. The colors are not very saturated and we don't have a lot of contrast. Plus I want to add a little bit more contrast and interest to our subject's face. So the first thing we're going to do is right over here on our toolbar, we're going to click on M or click on this button for our masking dialog. Now we have brand new masks associated with Lightroom. This is select subject and select sky. These are incredibly powerful. So let's go ahead and start off with select subject. We're going to go ahead and click there and you can see with this overlay, it does an amazing job selecting out the subject. Now, in this case, I actually want to select the background first. So what we're going to do is invert this selection. Super easy to do. Just click right up here on this little invert icon. Boom. And now we're editing the background. So you can see with these changes, I can now affect the exposure of the background, the contrast of the background. I can change the highlight levels. I can change the shadow levels all of this while keeping my subject perfectly intact. Now this is completely non-destructive editing. So as I'm going through here, I'm just kind of looking what these sliders do. You don't really have to like know ahead of time what you want everything to look like. You can just kind of push and pull these sliders and get something that you like. There we go. Now at any time you can turn simply turn this off or back on again. There we go, as we can see there. And in fact, you can change this. Let's say I create a new mask. This time I want to select my subject. You can see if I wanted to go back and edit my original mask, I simply click here on the original mask. There we go. And all of my settings are updated. So I can edit one of these masks at any point in time. Now, not only that, this syncs on the cloud. So all of these changes are going to be available to you if you have Lightroom on the iPad or on your phone as well. Incredibly cool cloud technology. So with all this said, let's go ahead and we're going to jump back in. I really like this change here that we made to the background. I think that definitely helps out. Now with our subject, I, I kind of like like the, her dress, everything like that looks pretty good. Um, but I think she needs a little bit more contrast on her face. So let's just start by bringing the contrast up just a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. And let's bring the highlights down and we'll bring the shadows back up just a tiny bit. So let's go ahead and turn that off and on. Now again, I mentioned that like, yes, I like this on the whole image, but what if we wanted this to just be visible on her subject's face? Well, you can actually add and subtract from these masks incredibly simply. Let's go ahead and click on this mask. You have an option to add. For instance, if you wanted to add some of the background back, you could affect that too. Or you can click on subtract. So let's go ahead and hit subtract. And then you could do like a brush and simply paint the area. You could do a linear or a radial gradient. Let's try a linear gradient. I'm just going to click and drag from the bottom up. And there we go. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to subtract this area from my original selection. And you can actually see that right here on the mask preview as well. So let's say I were to change the exposure. I'm just doing this so you can see exactly what it affects. So it starts by affecting just the subject because that was our first mask. And then it's minusing out this linear gradient that we made. And you can change this at any time. Let's go ahead and bring our exposure way up so you can see. There we go. As I move the mask, it updates in real time. Of course, I don't want my exposure that high. I was just kind of doing that to show you what uh, what those masks actually did. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. Now I'm able to just affect the top area of my subject and not affect her dress. All right. Now, if you want to make all of those masks visible and invisible, right here we have our mask dialog. There's a little preview button up here on the top right. Let's just click that. There's our before and our after. We can already see like pretty awesome changes with this image. Now, let's say we want a little bit more color in this part of our subject's dress. Well, we can do that too. Let's go ahead and hit create new mask. Boom. Select subject. And now this time I only want to edit within a certain color range. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract out various parts of this dress. Okay. So I'm going to see if I can subtract out this other color. So let's go to subtract. We're going to go down to color range and I'm going to click and drag this other color range right over here. And you're going to see it actually subtracted out these colors from my selection. And now only this area is selected and part of my subject's face is selected too. So I'm just going to click and drag my exposure way up and down so we can see what actually is getting affected. 
Now, also, by the way, I want to mention, we have a little mask overlay that we can see as you hover over. There we go. Now, if you want to change the color of your overlay, you can hit show overlay or hide overlay, and you can change the color by simply clicking on this little color icon here, and then you can change this to different colors and it'll update your image. Let's just change it to that green color temporarily. It's just going to make it a little bit easier to see. Okay, so let's go and X that out. It's that green color. Uh, obviously, you can just hide that overlay if you want. Now, in this case, yes, we selected our subject. Great. We minus out the colors for the dress, but it's still selecting our subject's face and our hand. So we're going to subtract that out one more time. Let's go ahead with our brush and then simply just paint right over the areas that you don't want to affect. So you can kind of stack these masks on over top, like over and over again. You know, what? I'm going to hit Control or Command C because I actually do want that area to be affected. But here we can see, let's go ahead and just turn these off. So I'm going to just click on these eyeballs next to these. Okay. So we started off with selecting our subject. Awesome. Then we did a color range to only affect certain areas of her dress, and then we changed it to green. That's why you can see it. And then I used the brush tool to minus out where it's over our subject's face. So now it's basically just affecting those colors on my subject's clothing. It's so awesome. So now with all of that, let's just click on our mask here. We have all of these adjustments that we can make, and it's only going to affect that area. So for instance, let's go ahead. I just want to bring the saturation up. I want a little bit more color. You can see for saturation up or down. There we go. Maybe you can change the color temperature, maybe a little cooler or a little bit warmer. I think that's looking really nice. And I'm going to change the tint as well, maybe a little bit more on the green side. Now I can just turn this off and on at any time. There we go. I'm going to just turn off show overlay so we can just see the changes. So there's our before and our after. Maybe it'll just take it a little bit more saturated. You can even click on this colorize button, which is super cool. And you can start to colorize if you want to bring in certain individual colors. Maybe you want to match colors from your subject to the background or make any other types of changes. I think that's looking pretty good, but we're going to turn off that colorize for now. All right, this is looking great. Now, again, I always think it's important to see your before and after. So right here on your masks dialog, let's just click on this little eyeball here. There's our before and our after already like, boom, this is looking so, so cool. I'm just going to change our colors real quick on that dress because I think it's a little bit too much uh, change there. Now, let's say I want to bring in a vignette. I want to make the background just a little bit darker, uh, but I only want to affect the background, okay, and just the outside of the background. We're going to create a new mask here, and I'm going to go to Select Subject. There we go. So our subject is now selected. Now, let's invert this so it only affects the background. So let's go right up here to the very top. We see this Invert icon. Boom. Click that, and the background is now selected, okay? But now I only want the outer edges of the background to be selected, right? Because we're creating a vignette and I want this vignette to only be visible on background. So what we're going to do is go to subtract, boom, and then we're going to go down to where it says radial gradient. Let's click on that radial gradient and I'm going to click on the middle and drag out. There we go. And you can see it's actually subtracting from my selection. You can see that as I move this in, there we go. We're seeing less and less of that overlay color. Okay, you can bring your center area in or out to affect more or less, basically changing your feathering, or you can simply use your feathering slider right over here on the right hand side. Okay, now at any time I can move this around. So if I want to center it around my subject's face, I can do that. And then let's say I want to bring the exposure down a little bit and maybe the contrast down a little bit with that vignette. And I'm doing this again just on the background. So if I click on this before and after, there we go. You're going to see this is only visible. Let's just turn these little overlays off. I'm going to click there and go show overlays. We're just going to turn that off and show pins and tools. Turn that off. So clicking on this before and after, you can see I'm adding a vignette, but it's only affecting my background. How incredibly cool is that? Now let's create one more mask. We're just going to create a, in this case, a very simple mask. Let's click on radial gradient. We're just going to click and drag out. Let's make sure our show pins and tools are selected so I can actually see what I'm doing. Let's turn that overlay on there as well. Click and drag these out. Boom. That's looking great. I'm going to bring my contrast up and our exposure up just a little bit. Let's turn that show overlay off so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. And this is just going to help bring a little bit more there we go. And as you can see, I can move that around. It's going to bring a little bit more attention to my subject's face. So let's just turn that off and back on. This is such an amazing workflow. Now, the best part about this, in my opinion, is that all this is not destructive. It syncs with the cloud and you can make these changes at any time on any device, like your phone or your tablet as well. So check this out. 
If I want to go to my original mask, like this mask where I affected my background, I can click on this, I can turn this off and on, but I can still go back here and make any of these changes. So I can now fine tune my entire image after I've made all these changes to see how they all kind of interact with each other. So I'm not stuck with any of these things. Maybe I want to bring the saturation down on my subject's face just a little bit. There we go. And let's go ahead and bring the saturation up on my background just a little bit. I can make these changes at any point in time and we're good to go. It looks awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look at our before and after. On the very top of the mask dialog here, which is this eyeball, just click and hold on that. There's our before and our after. Boom, punchy image. I really like that before and after. This looks fantastic. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget you can download this image on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. It's totally free. And if you want to get more free videos, click on that subscribe button. Give me a big like, send a comment right down below. Helps with that YouTube algorithm. Thanks again, and I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.